this this is what it's about. I mean, and again, um, you know, as you mentioned earlier, man, my my network of of a lot of Division One coaches, man, this is the thing that they're all envious of that that I have that they don't have is there's pressure to win on their level. And it's at times, man, there's a, I'm not saying that a majority of them, but there are some that get very transactional. It's player for player. It's Jimmy and Joe. If you're not performing, you got to go. And that's just not our space. And, um, you know, they're trying to keep a job and and they have the pressure of a lot of things at their, at their, uh, at their front door. And so I think it, it forces, you know, that, that dynamic to shift a little bit. And, and again, I'm not saying there are great division one coaches that do an awesome job of connecting with players and building relationships and, and really growing the person. But I think on the small school level, because the dynamics shift a little bit in terms of that pressure that we can get a little more invested at times. And there's a little bit more time as you and I were talking before we hit record, there's a little more time that we get to spend. So as you mentioned, like the calendar, when they show up in, in August, man, we can get our hands on them right away. We get right into strength and conditioning. We get right into getting them moving, some open field work to get them, you know, in the right direction. And we start our fall on Labor Day. We go for about eight or nine weeks. That's full tilt, you know, one day off. And we're rocking and rolling on the field, a lot of inner squads, some outside competition, a lot of practicing. And the whole time, you know, of course, we're together. As you mentioned, that process in college, a little bit different than the high school experience. You're going to be with this group for nine out of 12 months for the next four years. Right. You know, so again, like when you always say this, when the, when the kid's 24, 25, 26, and he gets married, majority of the time, he's going to have one or two high school buddies that are up there with him. But then it's eight or nine dudes that he played college baseball with. Like, because 18 right. to 24, that's where you grow up. It's where you figure out what kind of man you're going to be and what your beliefs are and you're away from your family. And it's, it's a, an important time. But we do that. I mean, we're with our guys the entire fall. Now, again, going back to that care level piece, you know, we're with our guys in a lot of different ways, but, but in our program at Georgia Gwinnett, I firmly believe that if you build a better person, you're building a better baseball player. And so I take character and personal development. And again, I'm in the business of growing up men. Uh, I want to help them play professional baseball. But as again, as you very well know, and parents on the call know, at some point, no matter how old you get, that career is going to end and it's time to go crush life. And I need them to be prepared to be better boyfriends, better husbands, better fathers. That matters to me more than than anything else we do. So for instance, our daily schedule, we have a classroom session every day at one 30 that yes, we talk about the practice plan, but man, there's a message in that, in that classroom session that is directly related to how they see themselves, who they want to become, how they gain more confidence, how they gain more trust. Uh, not to go on a tangent here, but I, I do believe once a kid gets here and he's gone through junior college division one, and now he's at Georgia Gwinnett, there's a story that's being told, the narrative right. between their ears. And, and sometimes they don't realize that. I got to help them with self-awareness. But I think sometimes they've been given that story and they just keep replaying that script every single day. And so sometimes you have to help the kid realize that his hand is on the pen and he can rewrite this script. I'm going to give you a quick, you know, 30-second uh, yep, story here real it. quick. Absolutely. So we had a kid come in that, that had been two years at a junior college. He's a, a, a draftable type talent. He's a phenomenal kid and no disrespect, but I think maybe at the junior college level, there's at times there's some enabling and oh, yeah. you sort of let a kid get by with some stuff and you let him sort of academically just, just putter by. And there's right. no forethought of how's this going to affect him at the next school. And then as he plans to hopefully get a degree and so on and so forth. So the kid gets here and, and, I could tell there wasn't a lot of academic confidence. And one thing this year, this team, I challenged the group to be the first ever at GGC, the first ever 3.0 uh, team. We just, we've, we've really come a long way since I got here. We finished at a 3.2. Now I wanted this kid to be part of the solution. Thank you. I wanted this kid to be part of the solution. And I said, man, I feel like you, you, you don't realize how smart you are, but you don't realize that you can do this. And I'm not going to enable you and I'm not going to bail you out. And if you show up at a 1.2, I'm going to say, hit the road, man. I don't care how talented you are. We got to move forward. And this kid knuckled down. And uh, at first, the, 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 Walter, the motivation was to get eligible. He's got to pass a lot of hours. He's got to obviously do well academically. And a couple of weeks later, he goes, coach, I'm, I'm past the eligibility piece. Now I'm doing this for me. I know I'm a better academic performer than I've shown, and I'm going to be better move forward. He ended the semester at a 3.5. Wow. That's a success story. And again, right. when you come back to like, that was care level on our end, but that was personal development on a daily basis with him, challenging him 
to write his own story, to, to make it in the way he wants to end. And he doesn't have to listen to that narrative. So that's like, for us, that's the fall, man. I'm trying to get in the middle uh, between these guys ears. I'm trying to reprogram. I'm trying to reposition. I'm trying to get them where I know is going to help them be successful. They go home for break. They come back. And as you well know, that January to, to the first week of June is all the, the time, the grind every day, buses, home games, the whole thing. And um, it's nine months of, of pure bliss. I mean, when you're a lifer like you and I are, and, and I always say, I got the sickness. Like I, I can't okay. see myself doing anything, but being in that dugout, man, there's no other place I'd want to be besides being with my family. And you look at it and you go, this is where, again, from a high school parent or player, you want this experience like you do, but you have to understand it's not a hobby. You know, you, sometimes they play high school baseball because it's what they're supposed to do or they've got buddies that do. This is where the passion and the hobby get separated. This is a passion for our guys. I don't have to text them and wonder if they're taking swings today. 